A few weeks ago, I posted a video about redox flow batteries, highlighting some of the most promising and up and coming competitors in the global marketplace. It proved to be a subject that many of you good folks out there were quite interested in. So much so that I was somewhat inundated with comments about other commercial redox flow battery manufacturers that I'd failed to mention, with one or two folks suggesting that I must be either blind or stupid. And for the record, it's just a little bit of both. So thank you for your feedback. It's always, always a pleasure to receive constructive criticism. It never rankles and it helps me become a better person. I'm not saying that. So in this week's video, I will attempt to remedy my previous omissions and I'll be taking a look at one particular company that reckon they can do the whole redux flow thing at a fraction of the price and with several other significant advantages, essentially by replacing solutions of vanadium with nothing more exotic than good old fashioned iron. You're welcome. Hello and welcome to Just Have a Think. So let's talk about all those other companies right from the get-go, shall we? Just to manage your expectations a little though, this is not gonna be a comprehensive list of every single redox flow battery maker in the world, however large or small, because that would be a very dull video. And having delved into the global market a bit more deeply, I've realized there's bloody hundreds of them. China's got an entire top 10 list all of its own, for example, including Ronka Power, who I mentioned last time. They're the ones who've just completed the largest vanadium flow battery system in the world at a whopping 400 megawatt hours, providing enough juice to run 200,000 homes in Dalian, northwest China, for an entire day. It's also probably worth mentioning another Chinese outfit called V Liquid, who make these 100 kilowatt, 250 kilowatt hour assemblies that fit neatly inside 20 foot shipping containers and can be connected in series and parallel in a modular way to produce systems that can reach 100 megawatt hours or more. I also mentioned the Ena flow system from H2 in South Korea last time, but I missed out a massive industrial conglomerate over here in Japan that you may well have heard of. They're called Sumitomo Electric Industries Limited. Apparently they started developing redox flow batteries as far back as 1985, and have been successfully implementing projects all over the world since 2001, ranging from very large scale installations for national grid operators in Japan and the US, to smaller microgrid solutions in Africa, Asia and Europe. Speaking of Europe, the Austrian firm Cellcube, who I did mention last time, have some competition from a number of European manufacturers. The Schmidt Group, next door in Germany, has partnered up with Saudi industrial group Sabic to develop a vanadium flow system that they call Everflow, not to be confused with the Ener flow system from H2 that I just mentioned. Are you with me so far? Schmidt's Everflow technology can provide solutions for virtually any application from a standalone five kilowatt system with six hours of continuous discharge, right up to very large utility scale installations. Then there's Volt Storage, founded in Munich in 2016. They recently secured $30 million of venture capital from the European Investment Bank to develop a range of vanadium flow battery products for commercial and agricultural applications with the very laudable stated aim of making 100% renewable energy available 24-7. A fourth European option is Prolux Solutions, based in Switzerland. They've been going since the 1990s, and they make a redox flow system called Storac designed to fit into domestic houses. So in theory, folks, you too could be enjoying the great taste of vanadium in the comfort of your own home sometime very soon. Meanwhile, across the pond in North America, Infinity Energy Systems, who I spoke about last time, also have competition from several notable challengers. The first is Largo Inc, based in Ontario, Canada. They've been digging up their own raw materials at their Maracas Mention Mine in Brazil since 1988 to supply high grade vanadium pentoxide flakes and powder to be used as catalysts and as alloys in the steel industry. More recently, they bought up a bunch of battery patents from another US outfit called Vionex Energy so that they could start manufacturing their own flow batteries to get themselves a share of what they recognize as a rapidly expanding and potentially very lucrative energy storage sector. Primus Power Solutions, based in Haywood, California, have a commercial and industrial scale product called Energy Pod 2, based on a zinc bromine redox flow chemistry, not dissimilar to the technology from Redflow in Australia 
that we looked at last time. And then there's the mighty Lockheed Martin, which is a name you're probably more familiar with in the context of the advanced technology they supply to the US military for electronic warfare and integrated air and missile defense systems. Well, apparently they also make stuff that doesn't help kill thousands of people all over the world. Their grid star flow product is a vanadium based system optimized for six hours or more of flexible discharge in large scale transmission and distribution, peaker plant replacement, and bulk shifting of renewable energy. In 2022, they were awarded a contract to build the first megawatt scale long duration energy storage system for the US Department of Defense to be installed at Fort Carson, Colorado for the US Army. So maybe I spoke too soon. Anyway, all of that I think shows us that redox flow technology is not some flash in the pan, unworkable pie in the sky idea. It's a proper working technology that has an awful lot of very attractive selling points for commercial, industrial, utility scale, and even domestic consumers. Which brings us nicely to that iron flow battery maker that I alluded to at the start of the video. No doubt many of you will have heard of them as well. They're called ESS Inc. and they've been operating out of Wilsonville, Oregon since 2011. The basic flow mechanics are essentially the same. It's just the solutions that are different. As the system charges up, iron ions contained in a saturated salt water electrolyte gain an electron and deposit out as solid iron at the plating electrode on the left here. Once that process is complete, the battery can be put to use in the discharge phase where electrons run through the electrical circuit to do some useful work. The solid iron then dissolves back into the salt water electrolyte. Essentially, you can keep doing this time after time, almost ad infinitum, because there's no deformation of electrodes or buildup of dendrites like you get with many other battery types. Our safe and sustainable iron flow battery solutions, the Energy Warehouse and Energy Center, provide flexibility to meet the needs of customers ranging from small commercial and industrial facilities up to large upscale projects. Both solutions support a wide range of applications, including time-shifting renewable energy use, ancillary grid services, smoothing the intermittency of renewables, supporting capacity needs, and resilience in energy security. As well as less expensive and more abundant feedstocks, iron redox batteries also have a higher energy density than vanadium redox flow batteries due to the higher solubility of iron ions in the electrolyte, allowing for a higher concentration of active materials, which means that they can store more energy in a given volume. The solutions are non-toxic and environmentally friendly, and the overall system has exactly the same easy operation and maintenance that characterizes all flow battery systems. In September 2022, the US Department of Energy launched an initiative called Storage Innovations 2030, with the stated aim of developing specific and quantifiable research and development pathways to achieve the targets identified in their long duration storage shot including a 90% cost reduction for technologies that can provide 10 hours or longer duration of energy discharge by 2030. They're aiming to achieve an industry levelized cost of storage or LCOS of just five cents per kilowatt hour, which really would make an awful lot of objections disappear into the ether. Right now, the world's major flow battery manufacturers, including most of those we've mentioned today, are fully engaged with the DOE to examine potential barriers for further development and to help identify the most promising R&D opportunities that can get them to that ambitious goal. Now, I should just mention another option gaining some traction too. It's something called organic redox flow batteries, which aim to replace all the scarce and environmentally harmful materials in standard redox flow batteries with more benign substances. It take too long to go into the details here, but I did take a look at these things in a video I made a couple of years ago which I'll link in the description section below. Now, despite my best efforts at proper grown-up research for this week's video, I'm quite sure I'll have still left out some companies that someone out there will be keen to tell me are the next big thing in the redox flow battery marketplace. So if I have, and if you think they deserve some attention, then let me know in the comments section and I'll go and take a look. That's it for this week though. A big thank you to the Patreon crew as always for helping me stay independent and keep ads and sponsorship messages out of my videos. And an extra special thank you to the folks whose names are scrolling up the screen beside me here, all of whom celebrate an anniversary of Patreon support in September. If you'd like to get involved with all that, then you can find out all about it at patreon.com 
forward slash just have a think. And you can hugely support me right here on YouTube absolutely for free by subscribing and hitting that like button. Won't cost you a penny to do that, but you really would be helping us massively and you'd have my undying gratitude. It's that easy to do. You just need to click down there or on that icon there. As always, thanks very much for watching. Have a great week and remember to just have a think. See you next week.